Most people. And, and you know, and, and, and I really am so, every day I think about it, I think, I am so glad I am who I am. You know, I, I, maybe that was inborn. <laughs> Why, why did uh, m most guys who get a lot of money doing something want to buy a sports team? Why did you never buy a sports team? I never considered it. Um, I did help the Golden State Warriors a bit, um, that's to say, but um, that was, no, I, I know the ones, I know what you mean. As a matter of fact, it's funny because I was on Dance with the Stars and Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, yep. was calling me up and giving me and telling me how it was going to be so painful, you'd want to get out of it, but just take aspirin and get through it. His team doctor was helping me. <laughs> Most, but, but, I mean, the story you hear is that there's a guy over there who made a billion dollars selling shoes, but no one knows who he is and no one cares who he is, but as soon as he bought the Jacksonville Jaguars, suddenly everybody cares who he is. <laughs> you never had a moment like that? <laughs> um, you felt you had to own a team? No, I would rather donate money to other people's benefits, museums, and as I said, Children's Discovery Museums, the Tech of San Jose, the ballet groups that, okay. you know, I really, um, no, I think that you need a different type of e yeah. ego. It's partly your ego to own an athletic team. Man, we're out here to win. I, you know, I'm not that way. I'm here, we're all out here to get along together and do our parts in the world and live together and be, you know, be happy and hmm. benefiting children. You know, the next generation does a lot more. Do you have kids? I sure do. How many kids you got? I have three kids and hey. they're, they're all in college or past. They're all out of the house. Okay. <laughs> and um, the matter of fact, I'm here partly because of that. My last kid graduated from high school. After a few weeks of being alone in a huge house, I wasn't married then. I um, did a lot of things I put off for 20 years. I wrote a book. I started a company with some Apple executives that went public. I raised a lot of money, and I started accepting speaking engagements. I hadn't used my passport in 10 years, because I don't like to travel. And it goes back to where one year I had a goal to go to every Hard Rock Cafe in the world. <laughs> and I traveled so much that year, I never wanted to travel again. But now, I, now all of a sudden, I started accepting speaking engagements for all these events, and I love it. That's the people I meet, different things that I'm seeing. Right now, I'm in, all of a sudden, my life is in a big spurt at the moment. And I love it. And here comes Fusion IO, a company I love too. And, um, and I'm starting to contribute there. Uh, let me ask a few more, and then we'll get this audience involved as well, because I'm sure they want at you also. Tell me this. How did you avoid the kind of professional jealousies that seem to be so huge a factor in so many walks of life? People say that, and they think that it's just natural to have professional jealousies and the like. But I just go back to my whole life. I did tell you I grew up very shy. My father had taught me that even where you go in business is really more than anything based upon people have to like you. If they like you, you'll go up and you'll, you'll rise, you'll get to where you want to. You just, and I, I somehow got in my mind, also when I studied a lot of psychology, I always paid attention to the fact that smiles and people liking you was a very important part of every culture. So I decided I was just going to be friend to everyone always, and I just don't want to make enemies. I don't want to have confrontations. I don't want to have arguments. I don't, you know, maybe um, may, I could not be a leader of Apple like Steve Jobs is maybe, but that's just in me. So um, I don't know. If you want to, you, you are what you want to be. I don't want to invade your privacy too much, but you want to talk about marriage? What about it? Sure. Uh, sure. The jewelry. I spoke to a jewelry association once, and I was their hero. <laughs> I've been married four times. Yeah, you, you, you may have missed this. You were laughing when he said he was the hero. How many times have you been married? Four. Four times. How come you've been married four times? Um, just wanting to be married. <laughs> Optimistic about marriage. I, I, well, the, not the fourth time. Then I decided I would never get married again. And, Are you married now? And so is my wife. Yeah, I'm married now. You we got married. married, and I got married. I found a great girl who loves technology, Apple technology. She works for Apple Education. She was a teacher for 14 years, like me, and she's a geek at heart. We met on a geek cruise. We got married on 8808 at 8.08 p.m. in Indianapolis at the Segway Polo event, so we didn't even have our family there. <laughs> but I won't forget my, my anniversary. I found, you know, I didn't think you could ever find a woman that wa wants such an unusual, weird person as myself that does all these things and, and buys every little technology gadget out there and explores them. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't think anybody would ever be right for that, but I found her. Congratulations, that's wonderful. Um, sure, you can applaud that. Thank you. Again, part of our discussion here today is to kind of either confirm or bust up stereotypes, and the stereotype you say you were 
was that of a geeky guy who, you know, certainly would, would have had a hard time competing with the captain of the football team for the best girls at school. Um, in which case, did it take you longer to figure out what makes for a successful marriage than it might have taken somebody else? Because you're well, no, so no, no, I'm still the same geeky guy. You are? Okay. I just didn't know how to find the geek girl. <laughs> no, I, I, I guarantee you, uh, I'm comfortable talking technology or things I've done, but the conversation goes to where a lot of people go, what TV shows and actors and what they're wearing and what you buy this and what brands are these? I, I'm out of it. I'm sure, I think, God, I don't have a thing to say. Okay. How about this one? Uh, what's your biggest regret in life? Regret in life? My biggest regret in life? Uh, I don't know, maybe something like a third marriage ending. That was tough. Um, I don't know if that's regrettable. Everybody has that sort of regret. Um, Boy, I know I've got one back there somewhere, but I can't put a finger on it. <laughs> Technically, all the things I did at Apple, no, I do not regret a single. They were all made with really good forethought, knowledge, sight, and I had a lot of luck going. Um, so, yeah, what would it be? Uh, probably, maybe, maybe I regret the fact that my team didn't win the world championship in Segway Polo last year. We lost in the finals. We lost in the finals. What was the final score? It was, um, you know, I can't remember. It was something like You've three to one. You've locked it out of your mind. It was three to one. Barbados beat us. You, you got beat by Barbados? Yeah. So we're playing in Barbados in another few weeks. Did you hang your head in shame for a while after that? No, but some of the members of my team didn't. No, I didn't really regret it. You know what? We had a great fun time anyway. <laughs> I don't think of it that way, so. Okay. That's yeah. good. You've had a lot of honors. Which of the many honors that you've had would you say is the most important to you? It, it's strange. Sometimes... It's just being known for um, starting Apple, but that's not as important as being known for designing the computer that made it all happen. Um, you know, it's like an award. If, one time I was, went to an Inventors Hall of Fame. I'm in the Inventors Hall of Fame. And that one's very important to me because you don't get in there being a businessman. Mm -hmm. You have to have patents and have really done engineering work. And I didn't have the big medal they give you. So I said, well, having the medal isn't as important as, on you isn't as important as knowing that you have it. And I said, no, no, no. Knowing you have it isn't as important as having done good things to get it. Hmm. Pre uh, you, got a, you got an award from a president, right? I got the National Medal of Technology. I got I mean, almost all of these kind of awards. It's just so many. But, you know, I don't post awards all over the house. I'm not that kind of person. Hmm. It's just, it's like if I did good things and I have memories of doing good things, even if other people don't know about them, I don't care. Okay. That's and last one, are you, are you a Democrat or Republican or independent? I'm definitely independent. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you Who'd know, you vote for in the last election? Well, a lot of people, it turns out that in 2000, I like to say that I voted for George Bush. You'd like to say that? I'd like to say that, and, and it's true. And you did vote but, for But, well, I voted for Ralph Nader, and they said that, the pundit said that was a vote for George Bush. Oh, I see. <laughs> so you really so, voted for Nader. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not happy. I did not vote for Obama in the last election, although I'm very liberal-minded. Who'd you, who'd you I vote voted for? for Ralph Nader again. You voted for I just, again. Um, okay. I just kind of had um, some feelings that it was the same, the same, the same. Common, you know, and the health care plan really didn't amount to, to anything more than transferring a few little numbers around from one place to the other. Hmm. You should come up here more often. We've got good health care up here. I know. Yeah, good system. I know. I okay. admire it. Let's look into this audience here and uh, see whether or not there are others who would like to have at you as well. It's a big room, and I'm not sure. Do we have microphones set up, or do we have people who are just going to stand? There's one here. Okay, I see some people wandering around the hall with some microphones. One thing you will learn about a Canadian audience is we are usually a bit shy, and someone's usually has to be incredibly brave to go first. So who's going to be? Right we here. got one right here. Someone's right incredibly brave in the front row and is going to go first to get us started.